Today at the Faculty of Informatics and Information Technologies of the Slovak University of Technology, uh, we have a conference, the Student Research Conference. And this conference uh, was or has been opened by Professor Markus Rupp from the Technical University in Vienna. Professor is an expert in the field of wireless communication networks. At the beginning of the conference, Professor Rupp had a keynote speech today regarding the future of the mobile networks. Now, uh, we would like to ask him a few questions regarding fifth generation networks, 5G networks, that would definitely interest many people. So, uh, Professor Rupp, uh, thank you for having you here today. Uh, can you explain in some brief way what are the 5G networks? Uh, how will they affect people's lives? Uh, when we can expect them to be in the service here in the Central Europe? Well, if you look at uh, 3G, 4G, 5G, uh, what we can see is that every with every new generation, we have a bundle of, of new technological innovations included. Very often, they are not very visible for the user. Uh, what the user sees is maybe a higher data rate and uh, maybe uh, some more services that uh, he was not aware of before. Uh, but uh, in the background, there's a lot of innovative aspects. Um, what also the user may see is that although the data rates have substantially increased over the past 20 years, uh, there was hardly an increase in in uh, the fee that he pays every month. Uh, so obviously, there must have been a, a very strong innovation aspect in, in these networks. Uh, but what is new with uh, the fifth generation? Well, with the fifth generation, uh, we are moving towards higher frequencies, millimeter waves. However, in the first line of uh, outcoming um, devices, we will not uh, very likely not uh, uh, have included. Uh, what we will have included is um, that we use so-called full dimension MIMO, uh, which means that we are using um, very large antenna arrays at the base station uh, that allows us to uh, do um, beam forming, uh, which then uh, um, s helps us to select users that are relatively close to each other and provide them uh, with individual data uh, at the same frequency ranges. Um, this, uh, in fact, has um, some uh, interesting outcome because uh, we can increase with this uh, also the data rate that we provide. And uh, one of the aspects of 5G is to have lower latency. That means for some of the services uh, like um, uh, remote control services, uh, we uh, uh, can make those now possible uh, as uh, before with uh, the fourth generation. We had latencies of up to 100 millisecond. Um, with those latencies, you cannot uh, really control any device. So now um, autonomous driving, for example, becomes possible. Also, people think about uh, more of um, 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 3G, uh, 3D and uh, classes where you uh, can have uh, artificial uh, virtual realities. Um, and those also require relatively uh, quick feedback time. Uh, because you also have to follow uh, the eyes of of the people that are watching to understand where they are looking to and and uh, react uh, immediately uh, so uh, only with this uh, low latency you would be able to do these kind of services okay thank you you said that one of the differences is the higher frequencies what what does it mean to people the higher frequency does that mean we will have a larger amount of antennas or the antennas will be closer to the people or how does how will it affect the architecture of the network? Well, um, it's it's not too well defined yet uh, because there is over the world many different bands. Here in Europe, we currently talk about a band uh, which is between twenty six and twenty eight gigahertz. With that, a lot smaller wavelengths come, and with smaller wavelengths, also the size of the antenna arrays on on the base station becomes a lot smaller so then they do not become so visible anymore 
Uh, and in fact, uh, we would uh, talk about something of maybe 10, 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Uh, this would then allow to form all these beams necessary uh, to connect to all the people. Today, uh, some people, for example, in Great Britain, uh, set the 5G radio towers on fire or they're imaging them in uh, some other way, saying that uh, 5G networks are being installed to help spread the coronavirus. Uh, why are people so afraid of the 5G networks? Well, every time we have a new technology, uh, there comes a lot of uh, worries with the people and uh, the British have a history about that. Uh, they also sabotaged the first uh, steam engines uh, because they were afraid that the cows would uh, not be able to give milk anymore. Um, nowadays, uh, it's not different uh, because uh, uh, although we, we know uh, very much uh, that uh, this technology is quite safe for human beings, uh, what remains is the fear of the people. And uh, there's always some people afraid of something. Um, how they found a connection uh, to wireless communication and uh, the coronavirus is uh, very obscure to me. <laughs> I cannot uh, say anything about that. Um, I'm also, I'm, I'm, I'm not a medical doctor, so I, I do not know um, uh, what, uh, how to define health uh, in the proper way, but um, I usually uh, relate to the world health organization who uh, has uh, stated that wireless communication as we use it today is in the same order of a health threat than drinking black coffee. I think that most of us drink black coffee, but uh, when the third or fourth generation networks uh, known as the LTE, which is a standard now, came, nobody was that afraid. There were no attacks. Uh, people were basically happy to have better mobile networks, faster internet. Why is it different now with 5G? Uh, I, I do not agree with this observation. Uh, there were always a lot of struggles for every generation that came out. Um, we still today uh, experience sometimes medical doctors uh, which uh, tell uh, their patients to be careful with their cell phones, uh, but uh, they do not tell them much about uh, being careful uh, with uh, uh, epidemics, uh, for example, and uh, cleaning their, their hands and so on. Uh, so uh, there's a, a strong disbalance in, in the public um, um, behavior and uh, uh, reception on, on wireless communication. Um, why this is uh, the case, there's a lot of speculations, but uh, it's, it's difficult to, to say really, because uh, we have not encountered in all the years that we have wireless communication, and this is for more than 100 years now, that uh, anybody uh, got harmed uh, due to that. Uh, so uh, it's, it's difficult to say. So. For the people, the only change they will be able to observe uh, when comparing the services provided over the 5G networks compared with the services over the 3G or 4G. Uh, you said you, you said about the different frequencies and so on, but but from the point of view of the people, what, what will be the differences? What will remain the same? Can I hold the same phone uh, like the hardware or do I need to buy a new device? Uh, will it go faster or what will be the observable differences in these services for the people? Well, as, as in every um, generation, it's, it's downwards compatible. That means you can still uh, use your old phone for a long, long time. Uh, it will not out, be outdated. Uh, but uh, when you finally uh, buy a new phone, uh, it uh, may have all these new uh, services included. Um, that means essentially higher data rate and with higher data rate of course comes uh, different services that were not so easily possible before um, but uh, you need to be aware of that uh, you get these higher data rate for more or less the same price as before uh, so that is where the innovation is in and if we will talk about the health risks, uh, the health risks of using the 3G or 4G mobile uh, networks compared with the health risk of using 5G networks, you think are approximately the same or is there some difference? 
Yeah, as I said, I'm I'm not an, a medical expert. I, I keep it uh, with with the World Health Organization, and they don't see any uh, this difference. So they don't see any difference between three G, four G, five G. Not, not to my knowledge. No. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anything else you would like to tell people who are afraid of these changes during the Corona crisis now? Well. Just stay at home, stay safe, uh, keep washing your hands. I think it helps a lot and uh, use masks. And uh, I, I hope that in a few months, uh, all this bad time is over. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor, for being here with us. Uh, thank you for your answers. Uh, we wish you all the best in your future research, future life, and, and so on. Thank you very much. Have a good thank day. Thank you. Bye-bye.